G'day folks. Well, uh, work finally decided to uh, let go of the old little mini mill. I haven't brought it home yet, but since I did a uh, video on the Eason digital readout scale that we pulled off the old uh, one of the old lathes at work, the faulty one, uh, I figured I'd open up the uh, display unit for the readout that's on the mill and just show you what's inside. Uh, I've also got some of the old tooling. There's a full collet set with a Morse taper arbor. A couple of spare other arbors. That one there I can put a face cutter or fly cutter on. Various bits and pieces. All the um, T-bolts and nuts are all half inch UNC. So we basically quarantined it from all of the uh, metric stuff that we've got. We've got two brand new sets and one old one at work. And they're all 12 mil metric and people kept mixing up uh, half inch and metric nuts and wondering why they weren't threading on. So I've basically inherited all the old stuff used blade for a deburring tool. Yeah, it's not too bad. Some Unbraco T-bolts. Really long Unbraco T-bolts. Very good. But anyway, this is about the uh, readout. Uh, this is a particularly a mill readout, not a lathe readout, so you can do um, pitch centre distance, um, a diagonal axis, that sort of thing, uh, radiusing. They're a really good DRO for the money. It's about a thousand bucks to get set up with one. Uh, like that comes with the scales. You pick the length of the scales that you want, like to suit the travel of your uh, bedways, the slides. Uh, you you specify the uh, length of the scales, how many axes you want. This is only two because it's a, just a mill drill. There is no real need for a vertical axis. Um, I can do that with a small quill, um, a small quill readout. Like a, it looks like a vernier that's bolted onto the uh, front of the uh, spindle head and moves up and down with the quill. Um, but yeah, it still has X and Y, and that's good. I've given it a bit of a clean up, I've cleaned the plastic um, cover that comes with them. But yeah, it's by Eastern Precision uh, China. It's, uh, it, for China stuff it's actually pretty good. The casing itself is all die cast alley as well, it's not, um, not plastic. So let's open it up and have a look. Oh, I figured I'd turn it on first and just show you what it looks like doesn't have vacuum fluorescent displays like the old ones but they're actually really good and it's still storing the uh, position that it was last in even though the scales and everything are off and this thing's been disconnected for a while it must have a little uh, a good but I know they have a backup battery in them but it must be a good one because it's been disconnected for a few months um, yeah so if that's my um, total position from zero on X axis. Um, let's say I've used an edge finder to find either side. I can press half of X and there's my center. So you wind that five down to zero and you're on the actual center of the material. Uh, DROs are fantastic. I love them. They make your job so much easier. So let's click zero and you can enter um, PCD. This is my center. So I've already found the center of the boss, say, let's say it's a wheel hub. I've already used the wiggler or a uh, run out indicator to find the center. So we can go absolute. Um, oh, come on. Yeah, diameter. So the PCD is 100, uh, which is a fairly common stud pattern perhaps. 100 millimeter by four. Number of holes, four. It's already it's already set. Somebody's done a very similar job. So it's four, four bolts on a 100 millimeter PCD. I've already found the center. And that's my starting angle. 45 degree starting angle. Ending angle 45 degree. And there are my coordinates. You wind these or wind the handles until these all both reach zero. So on, on X and Y you bring these down to zero, drill your hole. That's hole number one. Hole number two, again, bring it down to zero, drill your hole, three, four, again, and then you're done. You can go back to number one after resetting your part. Really easy. Piece of cake. So anyway, I'll do a, dem I'll do a demo of that when I get the mill set up. Um, of course, you, you don't have to do four studs. You, you input how many bolts you want to do, say if it's 5 by 125 or 5 by 114 millimeter PCD, you just enter that in as you go. 
hit go and just cycle through uh, each um, each uh, start and stop position as you go through it. Got 200 or 99 memory slots by the looks of it. Yeah, most of them are unused. Um, scientific calculation, of course. It's basically everything. Uh, let's say we go X. Um, I've already moved in so far, or if it was a lathe, if it's on a lathe and I've already taken a skim and I've measured that diameter of the bar, I'll zero. Then I'll enter, say, if the bar has turned down to 76.02 millimetres, you can enter that. And now I can turn, say, if I wanted to bring it down to 70 millimetres, I know I just have to basically keep turning and ripping it off in, say, three cuts, two roughing cuts and one finishing cut to get it down to 70 millimetres. Of course, double check just as you're coming in on that last finishing cut. Um, yeah, it works really well. But this isn't a lathe DRO. It could be used as a lathe DRO, but it's actually ideally set up for milling machine work. Anyway, let's take it apart and have a look. Okay, well, power supply is pretty rudimentary. Just an iron core transformer and basic uh, rectification and filtering and voltage regulation. It's a very simple power supply. Um, that's the uh, input board for the scales. They do work in quadrature, I think it was someone, the term somebody used. Obviously using four sensors and comparing the, uh, the, um, the waveform that comes out of it essentially. It's essentially just a waveform generator. Uh, main process is the uh, Xilinx Spartan XCS05. Um, there's our EEPROM uh, type and revision number. And there's a lot of these little Philips chips here, 74HC373D, and they're very close to the displays, so I'm guessing these are a local display driver. There's two, four, five, six, seven of them in total. I have had a peek underneath and there's a couple of SMD caps and things, that's about it. There's no real componentry on the back of the board. Um, apart from that, there's a Winbond W2465S-70LL. And that one there has been scrubbed off completely. No matter what I do, I, there's nothing on it. There's no reading. So that must be a custom interface uh, chip because it goes straight to this ribbon cable that goes to the keypad. That must be some kind of custom. And there's Philips... Um, chip there, P80C32IBAA. Um, no idea what that is. Yeah, they've just scrubbed it completely clean. Obviously they don't want people to know what they, they're uh, running. So there's, there's a rec rectifier there and a rectifier there. I'm guessing this transformer is both 12 and 5 volts. Uh, well the rec regulators will tell me that one. Yeah. Is it 12.01? No, it's a 12, that's a 5, I think. Well, actually, no, the caps are 16 volt and 25 volt, so... Yeah. Two different voltages. That's about it, really. There's not a lot more. There's little Texas Instrument chips, again, going to the uh, displays. Lots of them. There are 31C56VM by Texas in Instruments. That's about it. There's not a lot in here. Little backup battery. I was right about the battery. That's still in reasonable health. There's a little bit of green around the bottom of it though, but thankfully if it does leak, it's in a position where it'll just drop, drip into the bottom of the housing. Anyway, I'm running out of battery, so <laughs> thanks for watching.